uh, the Fed has gone so long being surprised by inflation uh, and having the market interpret the Fed as being consistently surprised or behind the curve or however you want to phrase it. Do 100 basis points. Now, the market is pricing in roughly a 10 percent chance of that. I, I would bet the chance is higher. And if they do it unanimously, I think it's a very big deal. I think it immediately shifts the narrative. OK, they're serious. They're looking to go faster, get ahead of this. They're not afraid of potentially causing a recession if that's what it takes. That restoration of credibility, if you read Bernanke's uh, op-ed today, that restoration of credibility really in the end is the only tool they have. So I, I would not be shocked. Uh, and, and part of that signaling and dropping hints to reporters maybe is an effort to surprise the market back rather than continually look surprised. Let's go to our whisperer, uh, Leesman. What do you make of that, Steve? 75 seems now like it's the new kid in town. Uh, what about 100? I, I don't think 100 is going to happen, but uh, hey, I was, uh, I've been surprised before. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I think that 75 now is very likely. Uh, it's a shift for the Fed. Uh, the Fed had been uh, talking about 50. You remember that uh, uh, Powell said uh, at the last meeting that 75 was not being actively considered. Well, mm -hmm. they're trying to, to both get ahead. It's not really get ahead, Josh. It's really bring forward. And maybe those it's are slightly different semantic things. Well, yeah, but, but it's not really the Fed is not trying to catch up with the funds rate. It's trying to get the market rates <laughs> catch up with the to bond a place market. where they restrain catch up demand. With the it's not, exactly, it's, exactly. It is trying to catch up with the Treasury so you market. You guys are... If I could, if I could just finish the sentence for a second Sorry. here. What, what the issue is, it doesn't really have to do that because those rates that you see in the market right now are real rates affecting the economy in the sense that the mortgage rate is what the mortgage rate is. Um, the Fed doesn't necessarily have to catch up with that in any particular amount of time. As long as that rate remains there, it restrains growth. So what you're asking or what you seem to be asking for, Josh, is not so much that the Fed catch up because that's not really all that relevant. What you want to know is whether or not the Fed needs to go, needs to push those rates higher than they are right now. No. Do you want a 6% funds rate and how the Fed would engineer that? Do you want a 10-year right now that's at 4% and how the Fed might engineer that? Just to be clear, if you look at the outlook for rates right now, they have dramatically shifted up the outlook for the Fed funds rate itself. They're now looking for a 4% or 4.08% funds rate for a peak terminal rate in May of 2023. <clears throat> I can tell you that number was 3% for August of 2023 back uh, about, about a month ago. By the way, on 513, I was just checking when I started talking about the possibility of a 4 or 5% funds rate. Let me ask you this, Steve, um, how people should think about this pivot. It's a pivot. Is the Fed being data dependent with this pivot? because the CPI was much worse than expected, so they pivot because they're data dependent. Now they do 75 instead of 50. Um, are they panicking because they have no control over inflation at this point and they know it and the bond market has been screaming at them to get more aggressive? Or, and maybe it's all of the above, you tell me, do they continue to misread yeah, inflation? And, and do, let me finish. They, they can, or do they continue to misread inflation so badly that this is the product of that. And I, I ask you that in the context of, I don't know, in the last 10 days, Brainerd, Mester, Bostic, I think, uh, others, all said 50. So they keep being yeah. surprised by these yeah. inflation reads, and now they're being forced to react. What are we supposed to, as investors, yeah, and, make and of it? Let me uh, let me go back real quickly to, to my comment on Josh, which, which I, 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 I think maybe I was a little bit uncharitable. I think one one thing that has to happen is, is the Fed has to catch up in terms of credibility. And I think that's what you're getting at. And the credibility is not necessarily so much in the rate as in its approach to inflation and willingness to do what needs to be done. Um, and I think that's part of the pivot here where it may be. You remember when um, I never forget this, when Tom Hanks said, uh, in Apollo 13, we just lost the moon when he got those instructions from Houston. Well, we may have just lost the soft landing, would be one way to say it, is that Powell has now come to the conclusion that he needs to sacrifice 
uh, the soft landing in return for the credibility of, of the Fed fighting inflation. And that is something that will help. I'm not sure that the market thinks the Fed is not credible here, but this is certainly something if it does 75 tomorrow. And guys, I got one full screen here I want to show you, which I need to explain, which is the, uh, uh, the, the outlook for rate hikes, the way the market is priced for the rest of the year. There's two, se no, sorry, not that one, guys, it's the other one. Uh, two 75s baked in for mm -hmm. June and July. And then there's also two 50s baked in and a 25. So that's adding 275 basis points. I think that's credible, and I think that may be the catch-up. It may or may not be the catch-up that Josh is looking for in terms of the Fed recouping its inflation credibility. So